Hey, it's your boy, Doc Williams. And today we're gonna to be talking about the four steps that you need to take in order to creating a marketplace in 2023. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna be going through the different platforms that I would use to build that marketplace. But to begin, we need to talk about your why. That's the first point. What is your why? Why are you creating this marketplace? Do you have already the network or the community and you're trying to connect your community to getting jobs? Why are you making this marketplace? The reason it's important to discover that or to really solidify that is because marketplaces are very difficult to make. And so understanding that it's just not gonna be like, oh, I'll make a marketplace. You have to already be thinking through this and making sure that you're going to have a leg up because this is going to take a lot of time and effort if you're just doing this haphazardly. So in the comment section down below, where are you? Do you have a community? Are you just thinking about this as an idea? What's going on? And if you're looking for more ideas, remember we have the 50 plus high profit side hustles and you're, if you're just looking for something, take a look, you can download it for free and all of that kind of good stuff. Now, the next part is if you're building a marketplace, you're gonna need to think about supply or demand because those are the two sides of the marketplaces. Are you gonna have the supply side? For example, if you're thinking about eBay, the supply. Do you have all the Beanie Babies or trading cards or supply there? Or do you have the demand? Do you have all the people saying, shut up, take my money. I just need X, Y, and Z. Which side do you have? Because when you're looking at a marketplace, when you're first getting started, you really have to focus on having one or the other. Trying to have both at the same time, or you're just like, I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to try to do both. It's really hard and it can feel really uneven. In the past, creating marketplaces for different clients, uh, we have seen that problem over and over again. People are like, I'm just going to figure it out. I'm going to do both. And it just ends in disaster because to get this, to have this flywheel effect, to have this momentum, you have to focus either on the supply side or the demand side. So in the comment section down below, do you have supply or do you have demand? And if also too, there's a Share Tribe uh, podcast that's great. Uh, there's going to be uh, down below where you'll see a logo. Uh, listen to that podcast. It's awesome. It's free. And it gives you a lot of ideas of different uh, marketplaces in the past, how they came about, and some of the people that uh, helped create it, such as if you've read from L Lenny's newsletter, uh, you can hear about how uh, Vembrite got started, all of those different things that is found uh, in the podcast. The next part is we've got to talk about, are you validating your idea or are you scaling? Now, what I mean by validating is, do you have people offering to pay you money or have you pre-ordered the idea already? That's really important because some people are like, yeah, I validated. People say they want it. No, 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 no. Have they voted with their money? Have they volunteered to pay you? And for this stage, if you haven't validated and no one's paid you yet, I would encourage you just to use a PayPal link or a Venmo or Cash App. See if anyone's even willing to pay you because a lot of people will be like, well, when it's done, I'll be willing to pay you. The only time this doesn't work if you're doing something with enterprise or something and they're just not gonna put $5 or $10 or 15 because you're dealing with a huge company, I would say then still go to a small startup and test your idea before you're doing enterprise anyway or get a contract. But the vast majority, over 99.9999%, just test them out, see if they're gonna pay. So that's on the validating. If you've already got validation and people are, are paying you, either paying you in a community and they're asking you to launch a marketplace, now let's talk about scaling. What have you tried so far that's not working or where are you getting the bottleneck to then decide on what platform would be great for you to create this marketplace and scale it. So if you have a community and you're getting a lot of people that are willing to pay you, and now you're trying to place them with a company or you have a lot of companies willing to pay you to get access to your network or your community. Now, what do you need to do? Or do you need to create a curated list of candidates from your community? What would that look like? Write those details down. So in the comment section down below, are you at the validating side? Do you need to see if people are even willing to pay you or are you at the scaling side? 
All right, now that we've gone through there, let's talk about what platforms you can be using. Okay, so we have five different platforms that we can be using. And the first one we're gonna be talking about, that's right, Google Sheets. You could actually validate your idea with Google Sheets. If uh, our friend of the show, uh, Andrew Canfee, we have a whole episode with him. He talks about all the crazy things that you can do with uh, Google Sheets and he has something called Better Sheets. Check it out. There's going to be a link down below. Check him out. But he actually demonstrated you could be using Google Sheets to create a marketplace. Yeah, it's a really basic one, but you can be listing it going step by step. And there's going to be a link down below if you want to try it. But Seriously, if you're like, I have no money, I, I, I just want to see if this thing can exist in the wild, you can do this with Google Sheets. Now, the next suggestion that I would be using, uh, our friend Paperform, you could be doing this, especially if you are just testing out one side of the market. This is really important. Perhaps you don't want to show your whole inventory. You're just testing if the demand is there. You can set up a really nice uh, paper form. You can just create a form. Uh, looks really nice to see if they're interested. And again, you're looking at one side of the market. So instead of thinking about, I've got to show how many listings I have, you could, if you're trying to do listings in a certain area, your town, your city, wherever, you can say, hey, this is for getting access to uh, a certain estate or homes or apartments in this area. If you're interested, sign up, let us know something about you. So you can first have them sign up, let, you know, get their email address um, and then follow up with them and then say, Hey, I'll give you the listing in a few days of a curated list of what you have. And then go from there. Um, the other thing is, like I mentioned, you could also uh, throw up a payment link to see if, hey, this is a curated list. We only have a select amount of people or a select amount of uh, homes available. We uh, we require a $25 down payment, $50, and see if they're going to pay it. So this allows you to, again, control the narrative. You don't have to worry about getting all of these different listings and feeling stressed. You can be doing this and uh, you can see this a lot of marketplaces at the very beginning, they showed it, they showed one side or they wouldn't allow you to see the inventory. And that allows you to scale and kind of do some magic behind the curtains, do a lot of manual work before they get to see all of your inventory on your site. So again, we love paper form. You can do a lot of automation with it natively. You don't even need to use Zapier because they have a lot of native integrations. You can have it email you, you can have it email the person. You can do logical branching with paper form. The list goes on and on. We love them. That's why we talk about them a lot. All right, next up we have Softer. Now the Softer allows you to build custom apps for your business pretty easy, just like you're using Legos. And if you look under their um, solutions, you can look at a couple different things you could be doing. And one is a template for marketplaces. We've talked about it for the last two years, how to use uh, softer. We'll do another one for the upcoming year, but take a look at what you can be doing. There's going to be a link down below if you want to use softer. And also too, to let you know, we have a uh, affiliate link. You get 5% off if you start using software today, you can just use Doc Williams for the additional 10% off. Get started today as well. So when you're using software, you can create an online marketplace literally uh, within three minutes and you can use a lot of their other templates. You can do a product marketplace, service marketplace that's coming soon, and you can do a rental one. And they just keep advancing more and more. So. Again, I would be using software for a marketplace if I'm still validating and I'm just thinking about what I'm going to be doing. All right. So the three that we just discussed, Google Sheets, Paper Form, Softer, those are ones if I'm just getting started and testing out the market, all of those things. This one, the next idea is going to be kind of in the middle, I feel like because we're going to be talking about Brilliant Directories. Shout out to Brilliant Directories. They're great at creating memberships and business directories, but also they have, um, you can be doing something similar to like Craigslist here, because if you get one of the plans, I think you can get it with an add-on as well. Um, so just check from the pricing plan and the add-ons because you can have different things. Um, but basically you can have featured listings on the page. So say for instance, you can have general listings and then if people want to be like the top seller, quote unquote, or the top person 
that is going to be recognized, you can have it and people can pay for that top spot. That in a way can create, if you're doing a curated marketplace where you're trying to match people or you're trying to have listings that will be ranked, I could be doing this with brilliant directories. Again, it's not going to be a full directory. It's not going to be a full marketplace where you're going to have like a seller profile and all of these things. But I see this as an option if you're trying to curate uh, talent pools and things like that. So it depends on the use case of what you're doing with marketplaces. But this is a kind of in-between one for validating and all of those things. All right, let's take out the big guns for a minute. Um, Share Tribe. This is what we're going to be using if I'm going to be serious and I'm going to be scaling my marketplace. And there's a reason behind this. There are two different products that you can be using with Share Tribe. You can do Share Tribe Go and Share Tribe Flex. I look at Go as you can just set up and launch and go so quickly. There's a link down below. We've done a full version of share tribe flag, uh, excuse me, share tribe go before. And uh, you can do this within an hour and get everything set up. This is for if you have um, buyers and sellers, uh, sellers and buyers need different profiles, you can set up that you as the marketplace get a percentage of all of the sales. Uh, the seller and buyer can talk to each other use messaging on your platform, all of those things right out the the, the right out the gate. So you can easily adapt for your marketplace idea. And I would just use go. Now there is sure tribe flex. And we've done a video about share tribe flex. Um, for the very beginner, if you're trying to uh, have more customization, you're already a developer or you have a developer on staff, and you want to have a real customized experience, you can be using share tribe flex. The vast majority of people should be going with share tribe go to get started. Once you figure out your your um, your market, what's going on with your customers, then I would just transition and go right, right over to Share Tribe Flex. But I've seen too many people there like I want all the customization, and they don't even have any customers yet, and they're just making all these demands. I'm like, if you go ahead and do Share Tribe Flex, you're gonna have to change it anyway. You don't even have customer. You're not even getting paid yet. Just use Go, get some money first, and then we can move it up. So. If, if you're focused and already know that you're going to be using a marketplace, you're already ready to scale, you either have capital behind you or you're ready to go and you've already got an audience, then I would look at using ShareTribe. Uh, in the comment section down below, after looking at these uh, different choices, five different ones, let me know which ones you would choose and why. And again, remember, go through these steps so many times, I get in the comments, that people are just like, well, I just want to know which one's better. And then you're going to be able to make a wise decision on what platform would be best for you right now. If you like these kind of videos, make sure that you like and subscribe. We do these every single week and I'll see you in the next video.